Hello students, this is again another session for discussion of unique clinical cases. So this is Dr. Menakshi Sundaram Mays, MBBS MD with 11 years of experience in teaching students at the highest level of competitive exams for the past 11 years. Okay, this is what you get with an academy when you subscribe for an academy. Here you can have daily live classes, structured courses, live tests and quizzes and unlimited access to all the videos and test discussions if you subscribe once. And there are multiple courses going on and this is the subscription prices and you can save a lot of money when you go for a longer duration of subscription. Let's go to the first question of the day. A 45 year old male with history of cirrhosis of the liver is brought to the emergency center by family members for acute mental derangements, disorientation, alterations in personality and confusion over the last few days. Patient is vomiting blood. On examination, he is disoriented and there is evidence of icteric sclera. His abdomen is distended with the fluid wave appreciated. His urine drug screen and ethanol screen are both negative. Blood ammonia level was elevated. All other tests have been normal. What is the most likely cause of the patient's symptoms? And what are the most likely precipitating factor for the patient's symptoms? And what is the cause for fluid in the abdomen? Now, instead of taking it as a part of MCQ discussion, look at it as a simple clinical case discussion. This is a classical case of history with cirrhosis of liver. So right now, liver has failed completely. And this liver failure is right now having a huge slap on our understanding. Cirrhosis of liver is actually brought to the emergency room with disorientation and alteration in personality. What is the importance of liver? Liver is the ultimate site of detoxification, especially when it comes to an important pathway called as urea cycle. Urea cycle is important for trapping ammonia and that ammonia can be trapped. Two nitrogen can be trapped in a given molecule of urea. So urea levels can hit rock bottom when the patient is having a proper liver failure attack. So urea levels can be measured which can be very low when the liver has failed completely. And cirrhosis is a place where you have abnormal inflammatory changes happening in the liver because of which the hepatocytes are not able to deliver according to what they are capable of delivering. Why are the specific things that you have to learn about every single case scenario? Why there is vomiting of blood? Remember, liver is the site for activation of coagulation factors 2, 7, 9, 10. At the same time, whenever there is a liver failure, there is increased resistance to the flow of blood across the liver. So, for example, if I try to draw the liver here, the portal circulation has to go through the liver and comes out as systemic circulation. When liver is failing completely, this organ is not allowing the free pass of blood. So there is backflow of blood in the portal circulation because of which you can expect portal hypertension to happen. Think about all the areas in your body where you can have portocaval anastomosis, which is also referred to as portosystemic anastomosis. In first year MBBS, we have learned about six major areas where you have portosystemic anastomosis. Example, bare area of the liver or the esophago gastric junction or in the rectal area, neal area where you can have hemorrhoids. In all these areas, systemic circulation is making a contact with the portal circulation. In those areas, the back pressure of portal hypertension will cause varicosities of the vein. Varicosities of vein. And whenever the portal hypertension increases, at some point of time, the varicosities means the weakening of the blood vessels in such a way, they are not capable of maintaining linear structure, they become slightly curved here. Now these blood vessels can rupture, the ruptured blood can enter into the stomach. In the stomach, it can be acted upon by the acid HCL and can turn into hematin. And that hematin can be vomited out, seen as coffee ground vomitus. Remember, in case of hematemesis, you won't have bright blood. You will have your altered blood called as coffee ground vomitus, which is dark brown in color. Now, why do you have acute mental derangements? Why do you have disorientation, alteration in personality? Because your urea cycle is failing, you're not able to trap ammonia. So ammonia level starts elevating, which is the reason for encephalopathic changes. Now, there are certain students who still do not know why exactly ammonia can be toxic to the brain. I erase all these annotations here. Let me write it here. Every time there is an excess amount of ammonia present in your blood or in the body somewhere, that ammonia is trapped by alpha-ketoglutrate to become glutamate. 
Remember, alpha ketoglutarate is an important part of TCA cycle where alpha ketoglutarate is becoming succinyl CoA to continue the TCA cycle. Every single time one TCA cycle happens, 10 ATP molecules can be produced. But when I am trying to remove alpha ketoglutarate by force, because I have to trap ammonia, I am stopping the TCA cycle midway, there is a loss of 10 ATP molecules per every single ammonia molecule. So for every excess of ammonia present in the brain, you will be blocking the TCA cycle because of which there is a decreased amount of energy supply to the brain. That is one of the reasons for encephalopathy. Also remember, ammonia is highly hygroscopic. It can cause edematous changes. So edema happens in the brain because of which brain edema can cause neurological symptoms. At the same time, it can descend downwards to cause brainstem edema and can cause brainstem compression because of which it can lead to death also because of brainstem compression. That is inhibition of your circulation and your respiration. So personality changes, confusion, all can happen because of ammonia and the toxins coming out in the blood. So the most likely cause the patient's symptoms would be the ammonia excess and the toxin excess. And what is the precipitating factor? The accumulation of ammonia because of portal hypertension and also because of abnormal change in the blood pressure present in the cable circulation and portal circulation. What is the cause of fluid in the abdomen? Remember, Whenever your liver is failing, liver is the site of synthesis of not only the activation of coagulation factors, it is also important for synthesis of proteins like albumin and also helps in the storage of multiple kinds of structures. In simple words, it is written as mesh, the functions of liver, metabolic function, excretory function, storage secretory function, homeostatic. Because there is an albumin loss, albumin is not there in the blood, you will not be able to hold on to the water. So, the albumin rushes from the blood into the interstitial area. Accumulation of albumin's water into the interstitial area will be the reason for the fluid in the abdomen, which is referred to as ascites, which can be seen as bellotable. So, remember, these are all the ways by which you will try to understand how exactly liver failure can manifest itself as a clinical sign and symptom. Now, why do people give neomycin for treating in patients who are having liver failure? Because neomycin can inhibit the commensal bacteria. Why commensal bacteria should be inhibited now? Because commensal bacteria will continuously try to metabolize a lot of proteins. They can keep on releasing ammonia. Normally when the liver is normally when the liver is acting, it can trap the ammonia and can do nothing about it. If at all the liver is failing. So when liver is failing, the normal ammonia production in the body, just like a physiological mechanism, can even be dangerous for us. That is why you're giving neomycin to suppress the commensal bacteria from producing more amount of ammonia. Also, lactulose can be given. This lactulose can cause flushing out of the bacteria out in from the GIT because of which the ammonia production can be brought down. Also remember carbon dioxide narcosis can be exhibited and that narcosis is seen as flapping tremor called as asterixis. This is a very, I'll write it again, asterixis, flapping tremor. So this is how we try to discuss a case of liver failure. Now look at an alternative case history here. A 30-year-old female at 32 weeks of gestation presents to the clinic with complaints of pruritus. She denies any change in the clothing, detergent, soaps or perfumes that she has been using. She also denies nausea and vomiting. On physical examination, there are no rashes apparent on her skin. Blood test reveals slightly elevated serum transaminases and bilirubin levels. Slightly elevated. Now, the moment I say this, you may think about jaundice. But if it was jaundice, you can look for proper rashes on the skin. At the same time, it won't be proper slightly elevation of transaminase. If it is hepatocellular jaundice, there can be a very significant elevation of transaminase. At the same time, bilirubin also will be significantly elevated. So there you are clearly saying that physical examination is not revealing abnormal findings. At the same time, transaminase is lesser. The female is actually a pregnant female, 32 weeks of gestation. So this can be a case of cholestasis during pregnancy cholestasis during pregnancy. Now in the case discussion in your final year exams they can ask you why there is cholestasis during pregnancy. Because of abnormal hormone release you can have estrogen excess and progesterone excess. These can make the flow of bile slower. Bile flows slowly. So there can be cholestasis though there may not be a proper structural blockade because of slowing down of the flow of bile you can have abnormal amount of bilirubin. So this can be an equivalent of obstructive jaundice but not a full blown obstructive jaundice and so the treatment can be prescribing simple anti 
histaminics so that the itching sensation can come down. If at all you believe the cholestasis is troubling her a lot, then you can put the patient on any bile acid sequestrants. Bile acid sequestrants like cholestyramine. Apart from that, major treatment is not necessary if it is purely a cholestasis during case of pregnancy. And see, remember, there is no change in clothing, detergent, soaps or perfumes. Why are they telling you this? Because this is a way by which you are ruling out a concept called as contact dermatitis. For those people who have actually taken up a new detergent and they have been working with detergent for a very long time, the detergent can actually give you contact dermatitis, a type of type 4 hypersensitivity. So they are trying to give you a negative history. Remember, in any case of clinical history, a positive history is as important as a negative history and negative history is also as important as a positive history. Never ignore any of the important clinical significant statements. So this is a case of cholestasis that happens during pregnancy and this is a case of proper cirrhosis. I have just given you the mechanisms for understanding different kinds of features that you see in case of cirrhosis of liver. Thank you.